This is a breadboard. They're useful in all sorts of electronics projects, and we have a ton of them on our channel, along with a tutorial that explains how a breadboard works, how to use one, and some common mistakes that beginners make when using them. In this video, I'm going to go over a problem that is much rarer, but also very frustrating when it occurs and kind of hard to diagnose. In order to do that, we're going to do a quick recap of how a breadboard works. But again, if you've never used a breadboard before and you haven't seen our tutorial video, you should check out that first. It's linked in the description of this video. A breadboard consists of a grid of holes that you can push parts like jumper wires and LEDs into when building a circuit. It's called a solderless breadboard because these connections are temporary and do not require any soldering. You can easily remove the parts and move them around when you want to build something different. This is possible because of these metal clips inside the breadboard. When you push something into one of the holes, the two sides of the clip grab onto the part, maintaining electrical contact and providing a little bit of friction to hold it in place, but not gripping it so tightly that you can't just pull the part out. Now, if your circuit isn't working, the breadboard itself is usually not the problem. It is possible to damage individual parts like LEDs or have loose connections from wires that aren't pushed in all the way or wires that are not in the correct row. Therefore, you have an open circuit and parts aren't connected correctly. But the breadboard itself is usually pretty reliable. While it is possible to melt the plastic on a breadboard if you have a short circuit that gets things too hot, which you can see here, the metal clips inside are kind of hard to damage and are usually reliable and not the problem if your circuit isn't working. However, as I discovered when working on this project, and as a side note, I am building a radio-controlled boat, so if you are a new viewer or an existing subscriber who likes our Arduino content, make sure you check out the video description to find the link to that project. I actually have a breadboard here with bad internal connections. I was building the circuit and prototyping to control the motors for the boat with the Arduino, and I could not get the motors to spin and could not figure out why, because I was swapping out all my different parts. I tested different H-bridges. I even tried a different Arduino. But when I was doing that, I was doing it on a different breadboard. It never occurred to me to actually check if the breadboard was the problem. So I would get everything working on a different breadboard with a different Arduino and try to swap things back over to this breadboard and then the motors wouldn't spin and it finally occurred to me that I needed to actually check the connections in the breadboard to see if I had a bad connection in there that was causing the problem. So in the rest of this video we're going to zoom in and take a look at that and show how you can diagnose bad connections in the breadboard itself. So the first hint or thing that might give you some suspicion if you have a bad breadboard is that you should always be able to feel some friction when you put pins into the breadboard rows. You should be able to push it in, feel a little bit of resistance, and then have to pull, not super hard, but apply a little bit of force to get something back out. If you have a hole where the part just goes in and out with almost no resistance at all, then that's an indication that maybe the clips in the breadboard are not actually pinching it tightly enough and you're not going to have a good electrical connection. And if we look at this breadboard from the top, we can actually see that there's inconsistent spacing between the clips if we look at it from the top. So here, for example, when I look in this hole and see past the plastic, I can see the shiny metal clips, the edges of those, kind of through this hole in the plastic. And for that row, when I push the pin in, I can feel some resistance or it takes some force to pull it back out. Contrast that to, for example, this hole here, where I can't really see the metal pinching in at all, indicating that that clip is actually spread apart a little more. And I feel almost no resistance when I put the pin into that hole. I can pull it out, it could almost probably, I wonder if I turn it upside down and shake a little bit, it might just fall out with barely tugging on it at all. So it looks like this breadboard just has very inconsistent spacing on the clips. Some of the rows are good, and some of the rows are bad. And the problem I was running into is that my H-bridge, which controls the motors, if you don't know what an H-bridge is, we have a separate Arduino tutorial about that, again, linked in the video description, is a very long integrated circuit that takes up eight rows. And some of the pins are in good rows where I have good connections, and some of the pins are in bad rows where I have bad connections. So that explained why I just could not figure out why my circuit was working. It looked like everything else on the H-bridge was working, but the motors just weren't spinning, and that's because the motor wires turned out to be in rows that had bad connections. So rather than just a visual inspection like this, 
or a physical inspection testing with seeing how easy or hard it is to put the pins out. Next, we're going to get the multimeter out and actually test the connections in the breadboard. So this is a multimeter. If you don't know how to use one, we have a great multimeter tutorial on our channel, which again, you can find linked in the video description. We are not going to need all of the features of the multimeter here. We are just going to need the continuity test. So this is a function that simply lets us test, touch the two probes of the multimeter to something. And if there is electrical continuity, we'll hear a beep. So this is a great way to test continuity or connection between the different holes in the breadboard. Because if I take one of these sets of pins when it's outside the breadboard, then I should be able to just touch the probes to it and get a beep because this is just a single conductive chunk of metal. The only small problem here is that these probes don't really fit very well into the breadboard holes. So I am going to be taking alligator clips. I'm going to connect one end of the alligator clip to one of the multimeter probes, the other end to a jumper wire, and then that jumper wire is going to fit into the breadboard. So zooming back in, if I take my two jumper wires, which are connected to those probes with alligator clips and put them in one row of the breadboard, then I should hear a beep because I'm getting an electrical connection. All five holes in this section are connected because of that internal pin. I should not hear a beep if I put the two probes in adjacent rows because the adjacent rows are not connected. And again, this is covered in our intro breadboard tutorial that explains how breadboards work. So I should be able to go along and test every row and hear a beep when I put the probes in any two holes in that row. This does not apply to holes on the opposite side. The breadboard is not connected across this gap in the middle. So for example, if I put one probe over here in row four and one probe here in row four, I should not hear a beep. But if I put both probes on this side in row four, I should get a beep. And the problem I was running into is again that I have these loose rows where even though when I tested the holes in the row, it sounded like I was getting a connection, I did not actually have a good connection to the pins on my integrated circuit. So if I take a pin and touch it to the legs of the integrated circuit, oops, I lost a jumper wire there. So speaking of parts breaking, sometimes these jumper wires can fatigue and break off. We are going to take a brief pause so I can get a different jumper wire. Okay, we have a new jumper wire. Let's try that again. Anyway, so I should be able to go along and hear a beep if I put these in any two holes in the same row of the breadboard. I should also be able to touch one of the wires to one of the legs of the integrated circuit, put the other wire in the same row, and hear a beep, indicating that I have a good connection to the integrated circuit itself. And what you'll see here is that I do not actually have that for every single row. Here I am not getting a beep. There I am. There I am. There I'm not, so I don't have a good connection to that pin of the integrated circuit, and so on. So if I pop the integrated circuit out a little bit, we'll see that its pins have this slightly different... Oh, this one was actually bent, so that explains that problem, but there was another straight pin here that was in the hole where I actually didn't have a good connection, even though it looked like the pin was in the hole. And again, that is probably because the clips inside the breadboard were spaced too far apart, so they did not have a good grip on this pin and there was no continuous electrical contact. So we just had two great unscripted examples of how it's usually not the breadboard that breaks. Again, I broke a pin off of a jumper wire here. I accidentally broke a bent a pin on the H bridge here, which of course, when it's just sitting in the breadboard flat along with all the other pins, I couldn't actually see that that well. I don't know if you could see it on the camera here, but I didn't notice it. So there are other parts that are fragile and easier to break or burn out than the breadboard itself. And if I just glance at this breadboard, I might assume everything is fine. But when my circuit wasn't working, it wasn't until I actually took the multimeter and went through and tested every single one of these connections and discovered that I didn't actually have a solid connection inside the breadboard. And again, we can see most of the pins here on the H-bridge are working, but it's this row here where apparently there's too big of a gap in the pins and I don't actually have a connection to that pin on the H-bridge, which is then going to prevent the entire circuit from working. 
So to recap, your breadboard doesn't really need to be the first thing you check. Again, it is probably more likely that something else is broken or misplaced if your circuit is not working. And this problem seems to be pretty rare on new out-of-the-box breadboards. I have seen it as more of a problem, for example, for breadboards that get reused in a lab year after year after year. Maybe eventually the pins will start to fatigue and these holes will get loose. But for a brand new breadboard, it's usually not a problem. But it might be good just to give a quick visual inspection to look and see if some of the holes look like they have a bigger gap than others. Or if you notice when you're putting wires in that there's really no friction and the wire just pops out really easily, then you might want to get a different breadboard, or if your circuit's not that big and you have a choice of which rows you're going to use, just make sure you are using rows on the breadboard that have a good connection and avoid those rows where the connection is too loose. So I hope you found this video useful. There are a ton of related videos linked in the description, including a tutorial about how to use a breadboard, a tutorial about how to use a multimeter, a whole bunch of Arduino tutorials and projects, and a video about the radio control boat that I'm building. So again, you can find all of that in the video description, and you can find over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, not just electronics, on our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.